Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I wanted to do a 10 year update on my use of Retin-A. This video will contain before and after pictures a little bit later on. And I'm coming to you completely makeup free today because I just thought, you know what, we're gonna be talking about skin and how I think my skin has improved so much so over the past 10 years using Retin-A that I think my skin looks better at 60 than it did when I was 50. I started my YouTube channel because I was very upset about my skin. I didn't like it, I was turning 50. It looked way older than it needed to because I had been a sun worshiper. I never did a skincare routine. I started my channel at 50. I said, I'm gonna start a skincare routine. I'm gonna research what can actually work in your skin. And I wasn't really sure that the skincare was really gonna have that big of an effect, but oh my gosh, have I been blown away by the results using my skincare routine. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about my skincare routine. I wanna talk about my use of Retin-A and why I think that that is like the most important thing and why I've had such a good success with it, how I use it. I wanna talk about the timeline of the procedures I have had done. And then I'll bring in the before and after pictures so you can see the differences in my skin from then to now. And so while today's video is on Retin-A and my 10 year use of Retin-A because I really do think that it's responsible for, I'd say at least 50% of the improvement in my skin that I've seen over the years. I can't give it all the credit because of course I did start using sunscreen religiously when I started using Retin-A and that is super important to do. And I also started just keeping my face out of the sun so I don't do as much sun damage. I'm not causing as much photo aging now as I was then and I have had some other things done. Obviously, if you've been here over the years, you have seen that I put up a video for any procedures that I have done. I haven't done a ton, but I have done some things. When I started my channel and started my skincare experiment, I came back and I did videos for you showing you my results with Retin-A. So I did a nine month check-in, I did a two year, a three year. Then after three years, I did have a Fraxel dual laser treatment done. It doesn't resurface your skin, it just, drills tiny holes in your skin. So the vast majority of your skin is left intact, but it's really good for getting rid of discolorations and for reducing fine lines and wrinkles. So it was a really great thing for my skin. And after I had that done, I thought, that's it. I'm not gonna do any more Retin-A check-ins because you know now the lines are blurred between what was the Retin-A and what was the Fraxel. But at that time, a lot of people still wanted me to do a Retin-A update, so I did. So I did a five-year update. But then after the five year update, I stopped doing them. So here it is 10 years later and I wanted to do a Retin-A update. Now, obviously I do look a little bit older because you know other things are happening in my face. Uh, the underlying muscle and fat pads are shifting around. I have more eye bags here. I have a little bit more droopiness here. I have a little bit more droopiness here. There's the intrinsic aging that you can't do anything about, but on the actual surface of my skin, I think the surface of my skin looks so much better than it did 10 years ago. So let me just quickly run down all the procedures I've had done on my face. In 2013, 10 full years ago, I had a series of uh, four IPL treatments. And uh, I really liked the first one, but the other three, not so much. And in the end, I really didn't think it did that much for my skin. So can't say that that really added anything to the 10 year results. Then in January of 2014, I had some filler done in my nasal labial folds. And a couple months after that, I had some filler put in my cheeks. I only had a half a syringe on each side. It actually wasn't enough that anyone even noticed it, including my family <laughs> or anyone on YouTube. So um, I can't say that that had a huge effect on how my skin looks either, and that was nine years ago. In February of 2016, I had that Fraxel dual laser treatment done. So that is going back seven years now. I don't think the results from that are really sustainable for that amount of time. You know, everything's temporary, even in office treatments. They recommend with Fraxel that you do a series of two, three, four treatments. I had one. You know, it does cause some collagen production, but it doesn't last for seven years. It probably lasts for maybe a year. Generally, people go in to maintain their results every single year, which I haven't done. I only had the one done, so there was that. I got some lip filler in 2020, very conservative on that as well, so that's not still in there. I do use Botox fairly consistently. I gotta say, the older I get, the less often I get Botox. So I'm at the point now where I'm getting it two to maybe three times a year. Whereas back when I was 45, I was getting it consistently every three months. So four times a year. That's definitely helped to prevent some wrinkles because of course, you know, if you can't move 
a muscle, then you can't create that deep wrinkle. But I don't tend to get my Botox where my forehead is completely frozen. You can't get it where your crow's feet are completely frozen. I mean, maybe you can, I just don't do it that way. So you can see that, you know, when I smile, my crow's feet are there. I can scowl, I can raise my forehead. So, you know, I have a little Botox in right now, but I don't get it done where I'm completely frozen ever. So I always have a little muscle movement. And the after pictures that I'm showing you today were shot not now while I have Botox in my face, but six months ago in September. So I shot these pictures closer to my birthday. These after pictures were shot when I had no Botox, no filler, and before I started using the Nera, okay? I do also use at-home skincare devices now and wanted to mention those. I've been using the New Face for about eight years now, and I love that. That is like a temporary treatment, but it does kind of firm and you know lift my skin and reduce my wrinkles a little bit. When I take the after pictures, I make sure that I haven't used the new face in a couple of days because you know it pretty much wears off after a couple of days. I do use my Omnilux mask, which I love and I swear by, and I gotta say that just caused an overall brightening in my skin. I felt like it did reduce my wrinkles a little bit. I use that fairly consistently and I feel like the results from the Omnilux mask are part of why my skin looks better now at 60 than at 50. I also started using an at-home laser, the Nera, last year, but the after pictures I took before I started using the Nera laser. So Nera laser doesn't have any effect on the pictures that I'm gonna show you today. I haven't had any surgery, so, you know, can I give 100% of the credit to my skin looking better at 60 than 50 to just Retin-A, just Tretinoin? I can't because, you know, I do do other things. Like each thing does a little bit, but as far as like the heavy lifting in the skincare, I would really have to say that it is the Retin-A and consistent sunscreen use, but everything else definitely does contribute a little bit. Vitamin C, lactic acid, peptides, moisturizers, you know, niacinamide, all those other great things, you know, ceramides, all those other great ingredients that I use, they all do play a role. So I'm not saying this is 100% all due to Retin-A, but you know, a pretty decent portion of it, maybe like say 50% is from Retin-A use, I would say if I had to estimate, but of course, you know, there's no way of knowing. All right, so now my Retin-A journey, when I first started on Retin-A, I just had a tube of generic Retin-A from my dermatologist. I started at the 0.05%. And when I started it, I already knew that it could be really irritating because I had tried to use it once before, before I even had a YouTube channel. And I didn't have any instructions with it. I put it on every single night and I stopped with it within two weeks to a month because my face was so red and irritated and peeling and I couldn't stand it. So when I started it the second time, I had done a lot of research into it and I knew at that point that easing into it slowly and letting your skin acclimate over time was the way to go. So that's how I started it. So when I started using it, I only put it on once a week for the entire first month. So over a month, I used it four times, okay? That's how slowly I went in with it. And I think that that is how I've been able to have success with it because you know, I know everybody wants their anti-aging to happen faster and you want just wanna get in there and start putting it on, but if your skin gets irritated, you're gonna stop using it. So then after the first month was over and that went pretty well, I did have a little bit of peeling, I did have a little bit of redness, but nothing major. So then I bumped it up to two nights a week. So I used it eight times in the second month. And I feel like somewhere in there, my skin was getting a little irritated. So I went back down to like once a week. So I, you know, pretty much listened to my skin and anytime it got irritated, I went back down and used it less. The other thing I did is I waited a full 15 to 20 minutes for my skin to dry before I applied it. And that really cuts down on the irritation as well. It took me nine months to get up to using the Retin-A every night. So at the nine month mark, I decided that I wanted to then bump up to the next highest strength, which was the 0.1. I read a research paper that said that using 0.1% tretinoin prevents collagen breakdown. So, you know, we always hear that tretinoin increases collagen production, but to have it also prevent breakdown of the collagen that you have is really key. I got a prescription for that from my dermatologist and I started using that, but again, I introduced it slowly. I only used it once a week and I used the 0.05% the other six days. And I did it like that first month, only once a week, second month, two times a week, third month, three times a week until 
it took probably another six to nine months to get up to using the 0.1% every single night. You know, using it once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week, then monitoring my skin, going back and forth. It really was quite the project. And, um, you know, but it's what I had to do back then. There weren't experts, dermatologists, skincare people on social media. There were no instructions on how to use it. So I kind of had to figure it out for myself. It ended up working out fine for me, but I feel like I could have started it a lot sooner if I didn't have the fits and starts. So I did that for the first five years, but then Curology came on the scene and I started using Curology and, oh my gosh, why couldn't they have been invented sooner, you know? <laughs> it's a service where you get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a dermatology provider and you can get your prescription tretinoin through them and they deliver it right to your house. And I started using that and then I loved it and quickly became an ambassador for them. So I used Curology for the next three years. Then Curology introduced their sister company, Agency, which is really more geared towards aging skin, where Curology was geared more towards acne. It was originally founded to help people with acne because of course tretinoin is both an acne medication and an anti-aging medication. So I was with Curology for three years. I absolutely loved it. But when Agency came along, I decided to give Agency a try because I thought, you know, that's gonna be more geared towards my concerns and my aging skin. So this is my Agency Future Formula bottle. This is how I get my tretinoin now. I am an ambassador for Agency as well. And so this portion of the video is gonna be sponsored by Agency. So just like Curology, Agency is an online service where you upload some pictures of yourself. They set you up to have a one-on-one -on -one with a dermatology provider who then recommends what should go into your future formula to address your skincare concerns. So every bottle of future formula will have four active ingredients in it, which in my formula are tretinoin at 0.14%, which is even higher than you can get from the pharmacy. So I love that, that I'm at an even higher percentage. Then I also have azelaic acid at 5%. That is for redness in my skin. Having it in here has really calmed my skin and soothed it and removed a lot of the redness. Tranexamic acid at 5% and niacinamide at 4%. So instead of having the clindamycin in there for acne, I have things that are really for wrinkles, firmness, and anti-redness. I feel like my skin looks so much brighter, so much less red, my wrinkles are reduced, and I absolutely love it. I just wish something like this had been around 10 years ago when I was first starting with Retin-A because I wouldn't have started and stopped. What agency can do is start you on a lower strength and then bump you up slowly over time. And that's what I love about this service is your provider checks in with you every time they're about to send you a shipment to see how your skin's doing and they can give you personalized advice on if you're having irritation, what you can do about it, how to use it better. And if you're not having irritation, they can bump you up to the next strength and keep you going on your tretinoin journey. So where I had a lot of fits and starts, this can solve a lot of those problems. And it's just been so great having that one-on-one -on -one with the dermatology provider. If you'd like to give it a try, there's a link in the info box below the video. You just click the link, go over, submit your photos. They will set you up with your provider and you'll be on your way to using the most effective skincare ingredients that that are selected just for you and just for your skincare concerns. So I hope if you give it a try that you love it as much as I do. All right, so I guess now it's time to look at the before and after pictures. Well, let me just say that if I had known that I was gonna be using these 10 years later, I would have taken much more um, flattering angles, I'd say. Uh, but. It is what it is. These are the pictures that I have to use. Let me first give you my photo disclaimer, which is that these pictures are all taken in an at-home setting. I try to keep the lighting consistent. I tried to match where the light was and where the shadows were falling off. So it's at the same, the light's coming in at the same angle. I try to match the angle of my face, the amount that I'm smiling, and the photos are not retouched. I just put them up to help you guys decide if this is something that you think it's worth it. As I mentioned before, these after pictures were taken when I have no Botox, no filler, 
filler and they were from before I started using the Nero laser. So these pictures are from about six or seven months ago I took them. All right, so I guess now it's time to look at the before and after pictures. I feel like the biggest difference for me is in the crinkly texture of the skin underneath my eyes and my crow's feet were much, much larger than they are today. I feel like my face is just less droopy overall. My eyelids are definitely improved even though I don't put tretinoin directly on my eyelids. You know, I smear it there with my other products and so it does get there a little bit. And in these pictures, I definitely feel like the main differences are in my under eyes and my crow's feet. I think they look so much better. I was on the road to looking way older than I was, definitely. And I feel like my actual skin looks so much better than it did in the before picture. I think my skin tone overall looks a lot better, a lot clearer. I see a reduction in the redness in my skin. So those are the before and after pictures. I can definitely say that my skin looks better now than it did 10 years ago when I started my channel, when I started my anti-aging journey. And I'm so happy that, you know, putting in this 10 years of work has paid off. I mean, it's been a big project. As you know, I'm very dedicated to my diet routine, my exercise routine, my supplements. I take HRT. Um, I sleep on my back with my head elevated. You know, for me doing this whole 10 year experiment on my skin was because I was so bad to my skin earlier. You know, if I have one message for younger people, it is please take care of your skin when you're younger. And thank goodness skincare is a thing now. Everyone knows to use sunscreen. If I could go back in time and start Retin-A and sunscreen at 30, I would definitely do that. I think it's been worth it for me doing all the different testing of things has definitely been worth it. I've enjoyed it. And so I hope videos like this are helpful to you and I hope you find them informative. So if you do go ahead and give the video a like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.